Actor Alan Baldwin is in an awful lot of trouble for the shooting of the cinematographer Helena Hutchins on the set of his movie Rust. But what's going to happen? Will he actually be convicted for involuntary manslaughter? Alan Baldwin was on the movie set of the Western Rust in the small town of Bonanza Creek, New Mexico, back on October 1st, 2021. With him were cinematographer Helena Hutchins and director Joel Souza. Now, the scene that they were filming had Mr. Baldwin sitting in a church pew. He was doing a move that's called a crossover, taking his right hand, crossing over to his left side and pulling out the gun when the bad guys were coming to get him. Okay, so they're doing that. The gun goes off. The bullet strikes Helena Hutchins, and it also strikes Joel Souza. Hutchins died later that day. Souza took a bullet to the left shoulder, and he did survive. Now, Hollywood has been shooting Westerns for years and years, ever since film was first invented. So you would think Hollywood producers and the industry itself would now know how to safely handle firearms on the set of a movie. But you know what? That's not what happened in the filming of Rust. Actually, Helena Hutchins was killed, as what, and the director, Joel Souza, was shot. Was Helena Hutchins actually filming What Happened? I'm Lainey Law. And I'm attorney Andrew Myers. Interesting thing about that, uh, that was just a rehearsal, but we actually have some of the very last film that Helena Hutchins shot. And here is the scene. That's the scene, obviously, in a better take. And uh, now this video is video that was shot by the sheriff's department uh, as they uh, walked around the uh, set uh, after the shooting, the very sad event that uh, saw the uh, death of the cinematographer, Helena Hutchins, who was medevaced in a helicopter off to a hospital where she lost her life. That is the um, armorer uh, who is on trial at this time uh, in this case. So um, what a tough thing to happen. What a tough thing. Uh, it raises a lot of legal questions. And um, we're going to take a look at them on this episode. All of this that we're seeing and we're hearing about today is happened on the scene of the film Rust. So we have as the main person in question, we have Alec Baldwin. So Alec Baldwin was a star and also the producer. What exactly was his role and what was the whole idea behind this? Well, uh, Alec Baldwin had always wanted to do this Western. It was kind of a passion for him. It was kind of a, something he had always wanted to do. So he was the executive producer. Uh, apparently, there were six or seven actual producers, each with varying jobs, ranging from just raising money to getting things together. But Baldwin, this was his baby. This was not a huge Hollywood production, you know, the big, the big blockbusters that you see. This was a, a pet project of his, and you know, he brought people together uh, to do the movie. But you know, he was not only the star who had the gun in his hand, but he was also the executive producer of this movie. What we know, someone was shot and killed. Another person was wounded on the movie set. So obviously a full investigation was done. What came out of that investigation? Well, um, what came out of the investigation was there had been a lot of problems on that set. People just, you know, actually during breaks in the filming, people were taking guns and shooting cans as target practice. Uh, there is some video of Mr. Baldwin actually, you know, off the set, you know, firing guns. And so there was kind of a, a very relaxed attitude uh, towards guns. And a person on a movie set who is in charge of uh, overseeing firearms, whether they're long guns or revolvers, that's called the armorer. And the armorer in this case uh, is a young woman by the name of Hannah Gutierrez, and she is 24 years old. And the investigation found that there was some questionable um, activity 
going on during the filming of that movie. Alec Baldwin famously claimed that he never pulled the trigger on the gun. It was a misfire and no way it was his fault. How did that play into the investigation? That defies all common sense. Isn't there a gun expert that says that was impossible? Yeah, you know what, uh, Hannah Gutierrez, as we are um, doing this podcast is on trial. There's already been a great deal of testimony and there will be more. Some of the testimony in that trial was really very eye opening. Uh, There just was uh, a lot of uh, laxity on that set. One of the fellows that testified and got on the stand was a man by the name of Ross at Diego, and he had been working in the film industry for decades. He's what's called a dolly grip. What the dolly grip does is make sure the camera has whatever footing that it needs, whether it's on rails or whether it's on a steady cam. And this could change at a moment's notice. The director might want to change, you know, the position of the camera or how the camera is going to move. Uh, those of us that have a critical eye watching a movie know that it's very rare that there's a still shot in a movie. The camera is always moving. And the dolly grip is the guy that is, uh, or person, who is making sure the camera operator has that support. So he had been uh, in the movie business for years and years and years, Ross Diego had, and he had seen a lot. And uh, when he went on the test, to, uh, when he went on the stand to testify, he was shaking his head. He had tears at one point. Uh, and although a lot of what he had to say uh, pertained to Hannah Gutierrez, it also pertained to just the lax attitude towards guns on the set. I recall walking by her uh, cart a number of times and firearms and or uh, bandoliers or ammo belts being left out on the cart uh, unsecured. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen an armor pull loose ammo out of a fanny pack. Typically, my experience with armors is um, any ammo they use Blanks or dummies comes out of some sort of container, whether it's a labeled box or um, some other plastic type ammo container. So, um, now in terms of you, you indicated that you would see uh, firearms and gun belts unattended on the cart. Um, why was that? Why did that stand out to you? It, it was out of the ordinary. Um, again, my experience is, is most of the firearms I've seen on set come out of some sort of locked bag, locked container. Um, the armor, some armors, depending on the show, have a whole uh, wheel around cart with drawers that they can lock, uh, a drawer that potentially has the individual actor's uh, or character's name on that drawer. Um, so that character's props would live in that drawer under lock and key. Were the guns and gun belts laying out unattended on the prop cart, was that a safety concern for you? Yes. Why? Uh, it seemed inappropriate and out of the ordinary um, that those firearms weren't secured. And. Why is it concerning that the firearms aren't secured? Um, well, I don't know that they're completely under the armor's control if they're not under lock and key. So again, what Mr. Adiego had to say, a lot of it was just questioning the activities of uh, Hannah Gutierrez. But you have to ask the question, you know, I mean, the executive producer has some responsibility for all of this. The armorer's job is to provide the guns that are used in a movie. That's a big responsibility. In Rust, the movie, the armorer was Hannah Gutierrez, and she is on trial as we record this podcast. So her trial is still ongoing. But how is that trial affecting the question of Alec Baldwin's liability for Helena Hutchins' death? Well, you know, it is interesting, uh, and I'm sure that Mr. Baldwin watched the uh, Hannah Gutierrez trial. He had to have been watching the whole trial. Uh, and as to Mr. Baldwin's statement, you know, he went on ABC 
uh, and was interviewed by George Stephanopoulos, and he swore emphatically up and down and repeated himself that he did not pull the trigger on that gun. Well, you know what? In uh, the trial, several different experts actually testified and said that, you know what? No, uh, there's no way that that could happen. And one of the uh, experts who went on the stand was an S FBI firearms expert by the name of Bryce Ziegler. I can't account for all the other possibilities that may have existed in you know, some hypothetical scenario, but this is the result as I tested it in my laboratory. It would not fire without pulling the trigger. And at least three different experts uh, that I saw uh, in this trial testified to the same thing, that there's no way that that gun went off without somebody pulling the trigger, and it was in Alex Baldwin's hand. So, you know, sometimes with these experts, it's kind of hard. You have to ask the right question at the right time, and they go on and on and on. But it was very clear by the testimony uh, in the Ana Gutierrez trial that that trigger was pulled without any question at all some horrifying stuff that we have going on. I mean, you would think that, I guess I have a little bit of sympathy in the sense where when you do something that horrible by accident, maybe he could be in denial that he did pull the trigger. That being said, you know, the fact that they're saying that it's not possible, definitely some contradictions there. So Helena Hutchins, the cinematographer who died in the movie set shooting, tell me more about her. Was she just doing her job? Was she really just at the wrong place at the wrong time? Well, she was on a movie set that um, should have been better um, presided over by the producers of the um, film. There are standards, there are protocols, and uh, some of the protocols include that, you know, the armorer be in control. Uh, David Hall was actually the one who handed the weapon to Mr. Baldwin, and he said, cold gun. So in that business, when you say cold gun, that means a gun that's not loaded. So obviously Hall shares some uh, some problems here. He actually pled out to a lower charge. He testified in the trial, but he never should have said cold gun when he himself didn't personally check it. If you read into the guidelines and you listen to the testimony, the armorer is primarily responsible. She is the one that's supposed to make sure the guns have dummies or blanks, and that's a whole nother rabbit hole we can go down. Uh, but they're not supposed to be dangerous live rounds. Then whoever intermediately takes the gun and hands it to the actor, they also have a responsibility to check the gun. And then when the actor receives the gun, even though it's been checked twice, the actor has a responsibility to check that gun. So the cinematographer never touches the gun. And so they, you know, although they're part of the whole production, they're they're busy, you know, listening to the director, making sure the camera angle is correct, talking to the dolly grip to make sure that the camera is set up properly. So the cinematographer has a whole slew of um, issues that they are dealing with. And so uh, unfortunately, she was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And it's just a really sad, sad situation uh, at the trial of Hannah Gutierrez, um, the chief medical examiner at the University of New Mexico, Dr. Heather Jarrell testified, and, you know, it's standard to have this type of testimony in a trial of this nature. And she testified that the um, cause of death was a gunshot wound to her chest. But interestingly, she continued to testify that based on her review of all the records and the police reports and all of that, that it was an accidental shooting and that there was no intent. It was just an accidental shooting. So I was kind of surprised that all of that got in. And I'm sure that will provide fodder for the defense attorneys at the end in their closing arguments. But um, the doctor did say that, you know what, this was an accident. So even though it's an accident, you know, I'm a, I'm a personal injury attorney. I handle negligence cases all the time. And I don't like that term accident. I really don't because accidents only happen when one or two or more people do something they shouldn't have done. And that is the classic uh, definition of negligence. If you do something you shouldn't have done or you don't do something you should have done, that is um, negligence. And so I've never liked that term accident. And I'm not really sure why that was allowed to be uh, brought into this case. Now, is it true that the set of the rust was the set of the movie rust was 
considered chaotic. And how does that tie in with Alec Baldwin's claim that he never pulled the trigger? Well, obviously it was chaotic. I mean, as I had pointed out before, there were, you know, people shooting tin cans during a break with live ammunition. Uh, and as Mr. Adiego had testified, he never saw an armorer pull bullets out of a fanny pack. No, these things come in a in a case and live rounds come in one type of a case and dummies and blanks come in another type of a case. And for people that know uh more about this, uh, and that's what an armorer's job is, is to be an expert in this area, you know, they can tell the difference. And so it was chaotic. People were doing different things. People were actually having a really lax attitude about guns. And in fact, um, there had been complaints. Some of the um, people on the crew had walked out of the set. And so, yes, it was chaotic. And I think uh, just the fact that this happened, you know, underscores that chaos. After Helena Hutchins died, let's not forget director Joel Souza, who was shot in the shoulder but survived. Weren't charges dropped against Alec Baldwin? Well, yeah, initially uh, charges were brought against him and then they were dropped. You know, he was really emphatic that he had nothing, you know, he, he didn't pull the trigger. Uh, and I think that the initial charges were dropped uh, for other reasons, too. But then there were some forensic labs that did an analysis of, the, of that gun. And the forensic analysis uh, was very conclusive that that gun did not go off without Mr. Baldwin pulling the trigger. So that's when they, uh, re they indicted him. Guns, firearms, weapons, they're a big deal in Hollywood movies and on TV. But I've always heard there are fundamental basic rules for anyone handling firearms. What are they and do they apply on a movie or TV or on just any set? Well, yeah, uh, there are rules for um, people that handle firearms and anyone that has any kind of training with guns is told four really basic rules. It's more complicated than that. But if you handle a gun, you are required to follow at least four basic rules. The first rule is never point a gun at anything you don't want the gun to hit. The second rule is a corollary, and that is always assume that that gun is loaded. Always, always, always do not rely on what somebody else says. Um, the third rule is keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot that gun. And in Hollywood, that's really very important because you're not supposed to touch the trigger. You're supposed to have your finger in front of the trigger guard. And the um, fourth rule is that always you know, be aware of what your target is and what is behind that target. So those are just four basics. And people say, oh, well, this is Hollywood. This is a movie. You know, uh, how do you know, uh, you know, don't you have to have the gun pointed? And no, um, in additional testimony, uh, it was pointed out that you can use camera angles. I mean, just because the shot calls for a gun to be pointed at a particular target, it doesn't have to be pointed at that target. Hollywood knows how to employ camera angles, lighting, all kinds of tricks of the trade. Um, actually, you don't even have to have a gun firing because, you know what, um, there are all kinds of special effects. And a lot of times with special effects as they are in 2024 or 2021 when the movie was being shot, you know, there are special effects. You really don't even need live rounds. And so there was really no business for that uh, gun to have a live round in it. Um, Mr. Baldwin failed in two respects. And even though at this point, the armorer, Hannah Gutierrez and Mr. Baldwin are going to be trying to point the finger uh, at each other, Mr. Baldwin had an absolute duty under the rules I just told you to A, not point that gun at someone and B, to um, make sure that he knew that the gun was not loaded, but to assume that it was. So, um, he was negligent by not checking the gun, when, even though it was handed to him by David Hall as a cold gun. Uh, he still had a duty independently to check that gun, and he should have known better as the producer. Uh, and then, you know, again, as I said before, you know, Hollywood can do you know great things with angles. And there was really no reason to have the gun pointed at the cinematographer. 
that's certainly something if he would come back and say, oh, well, the gun had, you know, I was being told to have the gun at that uh, particular angle. No, you talk to the director who was right there on the scene. He knew it. He shot him. And I think this goes with an important lesson to just anybody even watching this, you know, if you're in the United States specifically, that if anybody ever hands you a gun that treat the gun like it's loaded, very important. I, a lot of the times, you know, people might have guns in, you know, situations where it's not super appropriate um, or just showing someone like, oh, I got this gun and the, the making sure, you know, always treating it like it's loaded and checking it and all of that always very important, not pointing it at something you don't intend to shoot did they ever finish filming rust guess what they did as shocking as it is uh, i guess if you have a couple of million dollars into a project you're going to continue the project and finish it up they left new mexico they went up to montana in the spring of the next year and they finished that film rust is in the can as they say do they have any plans on releasing it? I don't know. I honestly don't know. So there he is. That's Mr. Baldwin in the church. This is the last video that uh, the cinematographer ever shot. Sadly, she was 42 years old. Ukrainian uh, native uh, came to this country and made it big uh, as a cinematographer. And this movie, you know, working with Alec Baldwin, who was a big star, you know, this was seen as a stepping stone to uh, going on to do bigger and better things for her. Yeah. And I mean, at the end of the day, this is just a horrible, you know, accident. I know, Andrew, you hate that word, but it was meant to be something positive to enhance all of these people's careers. And it's really devastating that something like this would happen. And, you know, not even just on negligence of the armorers parts, but it sounds like a lot of people down the stream, there was a lot of missteps that were happening along the way. Yeah, I just want to uh, point out that I've kind of expressed some opinions, and they are only my opinions and my observations. And we're not saying anybody is guilty, uh, as we've said many times before on this uh, podcast, is that all people who are accused of crimes, including Mr. Baldwin and Hannah Gutierrez, until it goes to the jury, uh, and it may well have by the time you're viewing this, um, Mr. Baldwin is entitled to a presumption of innocence until such time as he is found otherwise. And so we don't know. There may be other factors that we do not know. There may be other circumstances that haven't been um, brought to light, but that's what the trial system is all about. So I just wanted to to point that out. Um, I guess my closing there, uh, that's the filmmaker there on the left. Um, she's the one that uh, Helena Hutchins, who's no longer with us, with her husband and their one kid. Uh, it is to be hoped, and other people have said that, not just me, that it is to be hoped that Hollywood has learned a lesson. Uh, you don't hurry up. Uh, one of the witnesses had said they felt they were in a hurry. They felt that this uh, movie was being rushed, and that's never a good thing with firearms. I just, uh, again, it's only my opinion, but I, I can't understand why there were live rounds on that set. I mean, if they wanted to go off and, you know, do some target practice, that's that's pretty amateurish and, and juvenile. Again, my opinion. But, mm -hmm. you know, those live rounds really, really, really should not have been anywhere near the armorer's cart in filming that movie. And it's just it's tough. It's really uh, very tough that this happened. Yeah, there's places that it's appropriate to be shooting things and a movie set is just not one of those places. Your friend's house is not one of those places. You know, you go to controlled areas if you're going to be shooting a gun. I think it shows a little bit of, you know, immaturity to not have the respect for this powerful weapon that it deserves. But we appreciate everybody who watched this far, and we would love to hear what everybody thinks down in the comments. Oh, absolutely. I remember growing up, I, I grew up in uh, an area where there was a lot of hunting, a lot of hunters, and people would come to church with uh, their gun racks on their uh, cars. And some of them were funny people. They had a sense of humor, and they were goofballs, and they liked a good joke just like the rest of us. But when it got to handling a gun, they, they got serious awful quick. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that um, the um, dolly grip, uh, Mr. Adiego, had said during his testimony. 
in dozens and dozens of films that he had been on the crew of that, you know, people can joke around, people kid around, it's okay. But w- once the guns come out, that, that there's a certain tone. And he had observed that um, other armorers had a very serious tone. A lot of them had a law enforcement background or a military background. And when you have either one of those backgrounds, it's, you know, it's military. You know, it's it's not a joke. It's, you know, you have certain training that, you know, you respect the firearm because it is a deadly weapon as this case really sadly shows us. And, um, you know, I just don't have enough to say about how, you know, safety is obviously really very important. And again, it's hoped that Hollywood would uh, learn a lesson. I mean, it's, it's really odd. Like uh, I had pointed out in the very beginning of this episode, you know, Hollywood has been doing Westerns for years and years and years, ever since film was invented way back a century ago. And I remember watching Westerns as a little kid, you know, John Wayne and all those guys, they were big, big, big. So you would think that by now, all these decades later, that the uh, people in the production crews and staffs would have it down on how to handle firearms. I mean, this was no um, this was no prop gun, uh, although it's been referred to. I've seen in some of the reading that I've done. This was no prop gun. This was a 45 caliber Italian uh, gun that was obviously capable of shooting. And so it's not, you know, I remember when I was a little kid and growing up, I did some theater and, you know, bang, bang, you know, we did, we did some theater and we used fake guns, of course, because we were kids and we didn't know what we were doing. But these people obviously didn't know what they were doing either for this to happen. So that's my parting shot. What are your final thoughts? I think it's horrible. I think that, you know, I think that it's okay if you enjoy guns as a hobby. And I think that it's okay to do it in a controlled location. But I think that there's just a lot of things that fell through the cracks here. And it's horrible to see. Yeah, it sure is. And so uh, as we always ask our uh, viewers to like and subscribe. And if you like this video, please share it with all your friends. We, uh, We like your comments and we do actually read them frequently. So you know what? Thank you for joining us and have a great day. You have been watching About the Law, a production of the law offices of Andrew D. Myers in Methuen in the Merrimack Valley of Massachusetts and in Derry, just outside of Manchester, New Hampshire. Remember to click the like and subscribe buttons down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to share it with your friends and others. If you'd like to talk to me about an injury case, a car accident, a slip and fall, a serious bodily injury case, or some other case, please feel free to contact me. I'd love to talk to you. You can contact us through my website at attorney-myers.com. We have a contact us block, or you can call on one of the telephone numbers we've given there. Or you can email me at andrew at attorney-myers.com. The foregoing is offered for informational purposes only. It is not intended as and does not constitute legal advice. Laws vary widely from state to state. You should rely only on the advice given to you during a personal consultation by a local attorney thoroughly familiar with state laws and the area of practice in which your concern lies. This podcast must be and hereby is labeled advertisement in some jurisdictions. And that's that. And that's that. And that's that.